In the Gospel according to John, Jesus talks about the close relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. It isn't like Jesus is saying, wouldn't it be great if the sheep knew their shepherd? Or even, let's encourage more familiarity between the shepherd and the sheep. Here, it is assumed that the sheep know their shepherd's voice. We hear many voices amid this COVID-19 pandemic. We are in the midst of perplexity and uncertainty, but there is a difference between the voice of the shepherd and the voices of the thieves and the bandits. It does require listening and hearing, though. For the disciples who have been listening and hearing, the shepherd's voice is familiar. Amid the welter of conflicting appeals and speeches and press briefings, the sheep are able to recognize and follow the single voice that can be trusted. Well, what do you say? Let's walk through these doors and let's worship God. A blessed good morning to you one and all, and welcome to Drexel Hill United Methodist Church this fourth Sunday of Eastertide, where Jesus teaches us about the shepherd and the sheep. Let's begin our worship now by joining together in the call to worship included in your bulletin. Open the gates! The shepherd is coming. We hear God's glad voice. Oh, call us by name. Lead us, O oh shepherd, into green pastures. Oh, Let's continue our worship now by praying together our collect for the morning. This collect comes from the Galician Sacramentary, about the 5th century. One of the oldest pieces of liturgy that we have from the tradition of the Church. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your Son, you overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate our Lord's resurrection by the renewing of your Spirit arise from the death of sin to the life of righteousness through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hello, Nancy. This is Russell over at the church. Hello. How are you? Well, I'm doing well, thank you. I have a question for you. Would you be willing to read the 23rd Psalm? Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls the sheep by name and he leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run away from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I venture this, for us 21st century suburbanites, any ideas we have about sheep and shepherding are probably second hand, maybe even third hand. Maybe we read about sheep and shepherds and we don't really know much are sheep intelligent or are they stupid? Will they follow anyone, anywhere? Are sheep like lemmings? Are sheep at all of their own mind? Do they think much? I've heard a lot of things about sheep in my time I've only ever been in the presence of sheep a few times. Uh, when I was serving in Lancaster, one of the parishioners had some sheep at home. When I was serving in Quakertown, one of the families had sheep, enough sheep in order to train border collies how to do their job. Sheep, one of the things I've read in the Bible 
and that I've learned along the way is that sheep know their shepherd's voice. One of the places that I was pleased to find confirmation of that was in a book by H.V. Morton, who lived from 1892 to 1979. He was a pioneering travel writer. You might say he was the great-grandfather of all travel writer, all travel logs. And he wrote a book in the steps of the master. It was between the wars. He went to Palestine, and his object was to have a look around and see what connections he could find in the Palestine of the 19... 20s and the Palestine of the scriptures. And one of the things he noticed uh, as he traveled around, he was near Bethlehem and there were two shepherds uh, who had brought their flocks together as was the custom in the area and uh, put them into a cave in order to keep them safe at night, then all they'd have to do is stay at the mouth of the cave and all of the sheep inside, they'd be okay. And at the end of that evening, the two shepherds were going to be going their separate ways with their flocks. Anyway, here's H.V. Morton writing in, in the steps of the master, and here's what he says. Sometimes the shepherds talked to the sheep in a loud sing-song voice using a weird language unlike anything I have ever heard in my life. Early one morning I saw an extraordinary sight not far from Bethlehem. Two shepherds had evidently spent the night with their flocks in a cave. The sheep were mixed together and the time had come for the shepherds to go in different directions. One of the shepherds stood some distance from the sheep and began to call. First one, then another, then four or five animals ran towards him and so on until he had counted his whole flock. The amazing thing about the story is that the other shepherd's sheep had stayed where they were, and it was in hearing that the sheep knew to come along and then to follow. And that's a message for us. Because I think it likely true that most all of the time we do know which way to go because our future is calling us. And what do we do? Our future is calling us, but we have interests and temptations and distractions that keep us from being who we're meant to be and being who we're meant to become. I think it's worth a thought that God speaks to us and we do hear, but there are so many voices. How do we hear the one that belongs to the master? Christianity is a philosophy for some and a system of ethics for others and a religious ideology for many, but following Jesus is not primarily a philosophy, or a system of ethics, or a religious ideology. 
This faith is a relationship with, well, let's use the metaphor for the day, the voice we have come to know that calls us to become. So, sisters and brothers, we're at a certain time. We're living in a certain time in the life of the world. And what are we being called to be? There's a temptation in these pandemic times to just sit back and wait and then start up again as we were. But for people of faith, for people who are listening to hear the voice that's calling us to become who we're meant to become, we're thinking and we're praying and we're contemplating what is to be what can be, what ought to be in order for God's loving will to be all in all. So, dear friends, as we come through this quarantine in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, as we start to wonder about how we'll set foot again into social life and interaction, how will that change? What will be different? What can we preserve? What must we leave behind? Who are we to become? And as we contemplate God's voice, we will hear, we will hear. And the shepherd says, my sheep know my voice and follow me. Good. And now, as you have been gathered in from the world to hear the gospel proclaimed, I send you back now into that same world to tell of the living Christ and to answer every doubt with a word of hope. Go now and share the message of the gospel with all you meet and take this benediction with you. God the Creator, God the Redeemer, God the Sustainer, be with you now and remain with you evermore. Amen. <laughs>